Hey, this is Horner, and these are the uh, problems from section 16.4 and 16.5. So these problems really aren't too bad. They all are based on the same principle of just looking at an electric field. So we've got an electric field. So let's say that we have positive charges on this side. We've got a negative charge plate on this side, and we have an electric field traveling across the page. And we've got some charges. They're either positive or they're negative, and they're being accelerated in the field. And they want us to uh, rank all of these charges in order of magnitude, in order of magnitude, not direction, of the particle's acceleration from the largest to the smallest. So let's go through and do that. We have to remember that the force on the particle is equal to Q times E, the charge times the electric field, and that's equal to the mass of the particle times its acceleration. For uh, what we're doing, we just want acceleration, so that's just going to be the charge times the electric field all over the mass. And what's nice is because we're comparing the accelerations, we don't have to know the true accelerations of each one, so we don't have to worry about the word pico or nano here. We don't have to worry about those prefixes. We're just going to plug numbers in. So let's look at each one. Uh, let's start with letter A. Letter A, uh, let's put the equation down here we're using. Remember. A is equal to Q times E all over M. And so we can just say Q, which is 5, times uh, the electric field, which is 40. And we're going to divide that by 6, and we're going to end up with 33. Because we are just worried about magnitude, not direction, any of these that are negative, we can just make positive. So for example, letter B, uh, we've got a charge of negative 5, but we can just make it positive times 40, and then this one is over 3, so this is 67 units. For letter C, we've got 10 <clears throat> times 80, and that's all over 3, and so this one is 267. For letter D, we have 1 times 200, and we're going to divide that by 6, so we get 33 again. For letter E, this one's just 900. Um, because we have uh, 3 times 300 divided by 1. And then finally, letter F, if you do the math, you should end up with 33 again. So we're going to rank these now in order of magnitude from largest to smallest. So to do that, we're going to say E is greater than C, which is greater than B. And then that is greater than A, but A is equal to D, which is equal to F. And that is your answer for number 51. For number 52, 53, we have an electron is projected horizontally into the space between two oppositely charged plates. Uh, here, the electric field between the plates is 500 newtons per coulomb, and it is directed up. While in the field, what is the force on the electron? And if the vertical deflection of the electron, what is, uh, I'm sorry, if the vertical deflection of the electron leaves the plates is 3 millimeters, how much of its kinetic energy is increased due <clears throat> to the electric field itself. So just a picture of what's going on here is uh, our plate that's on top, it's negative. Our plate on bottom here is positive. And we know that because the field is directed up. So this is the direction of that electric field. We have an electron in the field. Uh, the force on that electron is directed down. And here uh, we know the electron started and is moving through the field, and as it moves through, it is deflected downward. So that's kind of a picture. Let's go ahead and solve. So the first thing you want us to find is what is the force on the electron. So the force on an electron is equal to its charge times the electric field. And we know the charge is negative 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th. The electric field is 500 newtons per coulomb up. And so we're going to end up with uh, 8 times 10 to the negative 17th newtons. And then we know that that is down. So this is our magnitude, and that is our direction of that field. For letter B, uh, we know that work is equal to the change in the kinetic energy. And so if we just find the force times the distance, um, we'll know how much of that kinetic energy is increased due to the electric field. So here we're, we know that it's going to speed up. 
Uh, the force is 8 times 10 to the negative 17th. We just determined that from the previous part of the problem. And then we've got a 3 millimeter deflection, and so we're going to convert that to meters, so that'd be 0 0.003 meters, and we're going to end up with 2.4 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. And that would be the uh, kinetic energy increase, because remember work is equal to the change in energy. The next problem that we need to take a look at is number 57. And in 57, it says some forms of cancer can be uh, treated using proton therapy, which is really cool. Uh, we have proton beams accelerated to really high energies, and they uh, collide, hitting the tumor, and it kills all the malignant cells. Really nice therapy. Um, a proton accelerator is about 4 meters long and it accelerates protons from rest to a speed of something close to a little bit less than the speed of light. So here it's 1 times 10 to the 7th meters per second. Uh, we're going to ignore anything that deals with relativity, and relativity is covered in chapter 26. So here they just want us to find the average electric field that it could accelerate the protons to that speed. So acceleration here is equal to the charge times the electric field all over the mass. And we said earlier that comes from MA is equal to QE. Uh, first thing we need to do is set up an equation. So we're going to use the second kinematic equation. So the final velocity squared is equal to the original velocity squared plus 2 times acceleration times the change in your position. We know the final speed here is 1 times 10 to the 7th. Uh, we're going to square that. Original speed is 0 plus 2 times acceleration times our change in position, which is 4 meters, or the distance that it needs to travel. If you do that math and solve for A, you should get 1.25 times 10 to the 13th meters per second squared. Going back to this equation, we're going to solve for E. Uh, e is equal to the acceleration times the mass all over the charge. Our acceleration we just solved for is 1.25 times 10 to the 13th. Multiply that times our mass, which is 1.673 times 10 to the negative 27th kilograms. And we're going to divide that by the charge, which is 1.6 times 10 negative 19th. As long as all of our units are in standard units of a kilogram, a meter, and a second, uh, if we do the math, we'll end up with 1.3 times 10 to the fifth, and then the standard unit is a newton per coulomb for that uh, electric field. Number 59, this one, we have some electrons in example 16.9 that we went through together. They go through the anode of the uh, electron gun that we have here in the uh, CRT screen, and they're moving at about 8.4 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. They then uh, pass through a parallel uh, plate, so here's the parallel plates. The plates have an area of 2.5 by 2.5, and they're separated by a distance of 0.5 centimeters. There's a uniform electric field between them of 1 times 10 to the third newtons per coulomb. And they want to know in which direction are the electrons deflected as they pass through that. And they should be deflected uh, here, we can just say toward the positive plate. And then the next part, they want to know by how much are the electrons deflected after passing through those plates. So for letter B, we know that this uh, deflection is going to be at equal to 1 half times acceleration times that time squared. And our original velocity here is, uh, is 0. Uh, so we need to find out how much time it takes for this to happen. So how much time is it going to take for these to go through that field with that velocity? And so we can use 0 0.025 is the change in the position, all divided by 8.4 times 10 to the 6. So we use the 0.025 because that is half that distance between the plates and that deflection is happening. Um, and so here we end up with a time of 2.98 times 10 to the negative 9th seconds. So now we're going to go ahead and solve uh, for the acceleration. So here we have mass times acceleration is equal to Q times E. Whoops, jumped on me. 
uh, acceleration here then is equal to Q times E all over M. Our Q is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. Uh, the electric field here they told us is 1 times 10 to the third and that is divided by the mass of the electron which is 9.1 times 10 to the negative 31st. Uh, so now that we've done that we can solve and we find out that our acceleration is 1.76 times 10 to the 14th meters per second squared. Now we can go back to our original equation which is our uh, they want to know how much they're deflected so this is y is equal to this is our deflection is equal to one half of 1.76 times 10 to the 14th that's our acceleration and then our time here is 2.98 times 10 to the negative ninth and we need to square that when we're done we should get 7.8 times 10 to the negative fourth meters and if you want to make that a little bit better, you could say that's about 0.78 millimeters, so almost a millimeter of deflection. And that is the end of number 59. Next one we want to look at is number 61, so I'm going to move this over on this side. Uh, we have a conducting sphere on the middle. It has a charge of negative 6 microcoulombs. It's at the center of, the, uh, of a spherical shell. And the total sh uh, charge on that shell, so uh, the total charge QT is equal to plus 1 microcoulomb. So that would be the total charge on the shell itself. Uh, they want us to uh, just find the charge on the outer surface of the shell. And they said sketch a field line diagram. So we're going to do that field line diagram. Here's our uh, conducting uh, sphere and then outside we've got our shell whoops sorry about that and so we know that this uh, is the center we know that it is negative so our field lines are going to be traveling like this and since those field lines are going that way we also know through uh, Gauss's law that the field lines on the outside are also pointing in the same direction uh, at this point, they want us to go ahead and try to calculate what that is. Um, because the inside conducting spherical shell, I'm sorry, the inside conducting sphere is negative 6, that means that this has got to be positive 6 microcoulombs on the inside of the shell. And so the total shell has a charge of plus 1. Uh, the way that you do these is we first take the charge so we want the opposite charge of the inside of the shell. So we know that the inside of the shell is plus 6. We want the opposite charge, so that would be negative 6. And then we add that to the total charge. And that would be uh, some number, so that would be some number plus 1. And that will give us negative 5, and this is microcoulombs, these are all microcoulombs. Uh, and this would be the outer charge then. And so the outside of the sphere here would be, oops, not positive, it should be back that up a couple times this should be negative 5 microcoulombs so basically the equation that we have here is outer is equal to the opposite of the inner plus the total uh, and that's what you end up with and that's how you can find the uh, the outer surface charge on the shell for the uh, next problem, this is one is uh, very similar. Here we've got number 62. It says that a conducting sphere carries a total charge. So we know the total charge across the sphere total is equal to uh, plus 6 microcoulombs. And uh, it says uh, that's our total charge on the sphere is positive 6. And then the total charge 
of uh, plus six microcoulombs is placed at the center of a conducting sphere. So we've got a conducting sphere of plus six. We have a total charge on the uh, on the actual conducting spherical shell of plus six. So they want to know what is the charge on the outside of the shell. If this is positive six, we know that inside the shell we've got to have a negative six microcoulomb charge. And so we need to find out what is this on the outside. So our outer surface, remember from last time, is equal to the opposite of the inner surface charge plus the total charge. Um, so we've got our outer surface, which we don't know, and that's equal to the opposite of the inner, which is positive 6. Since this is negative, we want positive 6 here plus the total charge on that uh, conducting sphere. I'm sorry, the total charge here, which is 6. And so on the outside, we would have a 12 microcoulomb positive charge. So this one was negative. We take it and make it positive. The total was positive 6. You add the two together and you get the positive 12. And that is the end of section 16.4 and 16.5 problems.